in this world of social media and lots of times for women in business, we suffer from something my next guest calls comparison-itis. She has a new book about it. Welcome, Melissa Ambrosini. Hi, Melissa. Thank you for having me, darling. Oh, it's so nice to see you again. Congratulations on the brand new baby. Thank you so much. It's I, so I, great. I, I do not know how a, a lady of your of your very busy schedule can have a baby and a book in the same month, but here we are. <laughs> here we are. Let's talk about comparison itis. What does that mean for you? Yes, yeah, so basically comparisonitis is when we compare ourselves to someone else and we make it mean something negative about ourselves. And then usually what happens is we go into a very toxic negative self dialogue, which can lead to things like depression, anxiety, panic attacks, and worst of all, suicidal thoughts. So we need to address our comparisonitis, I think with social media, such a huge part of our lives. It's very easy to compare ourselves to everyone else's highlight reels, but we have to remember, and I talk about this in the book, that social media is everyone's highlight reel and it's not a fair comparison. So we need to look at comparisonitis. We need to get really honest with ourselves so that we're not spiraling into that toxic comparisonitis. You know, sometimes people, sometimes people use instead of comparison itis, they use the the term imposter syndrome. Is that sort of the same thing that we're talking about here? Similar, similar. Um, it all comes from that negative internal inner critic, I call it. Um, so imposter syndrome is very similar. It's when, yeah, you don't feel like you are good enough or you don't feel like you belong, or maybe you get a promotion and you think, oh my gosh, they're gonna find out that I'm a total fraud or that I'm, you know, I don't belong here, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so it is very similar. It all stems from that internal negative self-talk. All right, and all of the, I mean, we, we know all of the downfalls of all that negative self-talk. I mean, in, in, in our brains and when we think rationally about it, we, you know, we all understand the problems with that. So my question to you is how do you nip it in the bud? How do you stop it from happening when you start recognizing that it's happening? Because sometimes it happens and you don't realize what's really going on. Exactly. So I have a four step process called the ACEs technique, which I'll share with you. This is in the book. Um, and basically it helps you feel ACE again, because when you are suffering from comparisonitis, you don't feel very good. Like you feel really down about yourself. Like maybe you feel, um, yeah, just really crappy about yourself when you start to spiral into that comparisonitis. So I created this four step process and this is this is what I use anytime that I find myself slipping into comparisonitis. And it's an acronym, it's four steps. And uh, the first letter A stands for awareness. We have to become aware of when we're comparing and what are our triggers. So are your triggers social media? Are your triggers a friend is is it flicking through a magazine is it watching a certain tv show is it certain a certain celebrity or someone that you follow so know what know what triggers you to spiral into comparisonitis become aware of what your triggers are because once you're aware of it you can then change it but when you don't know you don't know right. so we need to become aware of it so that is the first hey. step a, C. awareness. And C stands for choose a different path. Okay, so what a lot of people do is they might see a celebrity or um, an influencer on social media that they often compare themselves to. And instead of going down that path of I'm going to compare myself and they have a better life than me and this and that, consciously choose to go down the other path and be inspired by that person. Well, what is it that they have that is triggering my comparisonitis? Like what inspires me about them? So it's a bit of a mental flick, you know, instead of being triggered, we can be inspired. So turn your comparison into inspirational motivation. So go down another path instead. So that's, a, that's C, C choosing. C. And then we've got E, eliminate or exhale or exit. So what I mean by this is 
if you can't eliminate the trigger, because sometimes it's like, you know, when we have a cut on our hand, we've got to, we've got to stop scratching it so that it can heal. Um, so if you can't eliminate the trigger, like removing social media or removing yourself from a particular person, you can either um, just exhale and breathe it out or you can exit the situation. You know, if you're standing in a room and everyone is talking about their brand new babies or falling pregnant and you've been, you know, trying to fall pregnant for seven years and you're constantly comparing yourself, you're allowed to exit the room and go and get some fresh air. Like there's no rules here. So E stands for eliminate, exhale or exit. And then the final one, S, stands for shifting your state. So the godfather of personal development, Tony Robbins talks about changing your state. So shifting your state is very similar. So often when we are comparing ourselves to someone else, we don't feel good in our body. No one feels good when they're comparing. They don't go, oh, I feel amazing. So we need to shift that energy. And often for me, if I find myself comparing, just shaking my body and shifting my energy, jumping up and down, like splashing water on my face, doing some star jumps, just doing something to move that comparison stagnant energy out of my body really helps me. So that's the four step um, ACEs technique that I use whenever I'm comparing myself to someone else. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for all of that information. The book is called Comparison Itis and it is available now. Always great to see you. Thank you for having me.